Today, as we continue on with our biome ecosystem series, we're going to be talking about the coniferous forest systems and the who, what, when, where, why, and how we can better analyze it to help you grow your plants better from these ecosystems. Now, when you go ahead and take a look at biomes, one of the main things that we want to actually take a look at is there are so many unique biomes throughout the world that they really do have very different attributes from the precipitation to the elevation, latitude, longitude, and that's one of the reasons why I want to take a look at different biomes and why it's important to understand where the different plants come from because if you understand the biome it will give you a very good general base plate on where to take a look at and how to better care for those plants. As you can see, there tends to be very large hierarchy where you have tropical temperate rainforest, boreal, and they tend to gradually move up not only in temperature but also precipitation. Now when we're looking at coniferous forests, they are generally going to be located in the northern hemisphere along the not only across North America but also northern Europe in the Scandinavian region but most of it is going to be located across Asia as well. But a lot of times, most of it, when you really talk about specifically coniferous forests, a lot of times they're specifically talking about those regions that are in North America along the United States Canadian border. Much higher elevation, but it's going to be much lower in temperature. And it's going to have very massive, massive temperature swings, typically between negative 40 and 70 degrees depending on whether it's summer or winter. A negative 40 in the winter time and 70 more towards the summer. However, on average, when you look at it across the board, it's going to be approximately 50 degrees. And that's in Fahrenheit. But overall, it does tend to be on the colder side a good portion of the year. When you look at the precipitation, most of the precipitation within the system tends to be in the form of snow during the winter time and then as the snow melts off in early spring as the snow starts to melt in early spring it's going to create a lot of high valley ponds streams and small rivers that cascade down into the valleys of these mountain systems and that's where most of the precipitation comes from there is a little bit that tends to come during the summertime but when you look at it the vast vast majority is going to come during the winter time when you're looking at the soil structures and those types in a coniferous forest system, most of it is going to be very, very hard rock, whether it is granite or another form just because of these high mountainous peaks and very rocky areas that they tend to come from. With that though, the soils do tend to be fairly acidic that coincides with the high rainfall. It's going to attach itself to those nutrients and drive it down deep into the soil. Another side attribute of that though that makes it really, really great is there's going to be a very, very high percentage of micronutrients, whether it is your iron, boron, your copper, a lot of the manganese, they tend to be very, very high. And when you want to artificially supplement it with soil amendments these regions is where a lot of those minerals are mined from whether it's the rocky mountains the andes mountains or the ural mountains now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at these different forest systems and seen kind of what they are look like as you can see from a lot of these pictures they tend to be very dense vegetation in particular, they're going to be evergreens, meaning it's going to be a pine needle type system where it has a smaller, thin, elongated needle. This is going to, the main reason why these plants have developed this type of leaf structure is there tends to be high evaporation and long periods of cold. So that way, the smaller needles can help reduce the amount of evaporation that gets but yet with it being such long winter seasons, you're going to have large amounts of sunshine potential in the winter time. And it will also allow these plants to take advantage of that sunshine during the winter without losing too much moisture due to the high winter conditions. 
when you're looking at the animal types from these systems, you're going to ha it's going to be predominantly mammals that dominate this region. You're looking at small mammals that are native to force, whether they are mice, rats, wolves, bears, deer, elk, wolverines. They are all going to form within that category of primarily mammals. You will see quite a few hawks as well, from sparrows, robins, on up to your small predatory birds, uh, falcons and hawks. But for the most part, they are going to be mammal dominated areas that are going to be much more hardy during these extreme winter conditions that actually can survive that. So why is it that we even care about this type of ecosystem? A large amount, as mentioned previously, a large amount of our soil amendments come from this region, whether it is the minerals that we mine that we artificially add, or those type of uh, high mountain springs that allow us to help starting to purify our water this is the beginning sources of a lot of the aquifers that we get from a lot of the snow collects in these mountain regions and then it will slowly trickle as it melts down into the valleys collecting down into aquifer systems where a lot of the groundwater comes from the next largest thing where a lot of these are important is these tend to be major sources of bark, pine needles, wood mulch, a lot of those common materials that you're going to find in most compost piles that are the main source of carbon. And that's one of the reasons why these ecosystems are so important is they might not necessarily be directly interactive, but due to the mineral deposits that you can locate in them and the animals, it comes as a very important source. Not to mention a lot of the plants that we do have that are ornamental in origin, whether it's your spruces, your cedars, a lot of them originate from this region. And so by understanding this region, then we can help to identify what a lot of these ornamental trees that are gorgeous used in the landscape need. And so that way we can better provide for them. I would like to thank you for joining us this video as we take a look at a cursory glance into the coniferous forest systems. And now, here is a word from our sponsors. This episode of Yule Acres is brought to you by Yule Acres Grapefruit Naturally Scented Lip Balm. For more information about this product, click on the link in the description below.